Hmm. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer. I'm developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, welcome to these videos where I basically go through some of the work that I've been up to and try to describe some of the other work that's going on in Inkscape. Um, the first news is the is the fact that we've managed to release beta 2. Um, with great apologies to everybody who was waiting for the 1.4 release. Um, we still have a lot of issues with Windows that we're trying to sort out, and we wanted to make sure that essentially uh, we had time to fix them and you guys had time to test them. Um, this is especially important to test for Windows users because there are so few Windows developers that we are not confident that uh, we're testing things properly. Um, a great example of that is one of the fixes that I managed to do once after Beta 2 had been released was a massive crash. Quite a few Windows users would just, it would crash straight away when they tried to load. And that was because of a recent files issue. Um, basically, you know how Windows has C colon slash slash and Unix machines like Mac OS and Linux have just slash? Well, it didn't really take account of that slash slash situation. The other reason why you might be interested to try Beta 2, and you to keep this under your hat, the one that I'm currently not wearing, uh, which is that there's an Affinity Designer opener in Beta 2. It's currently in Trials, so it's basically a preview, uh, but it's a Google Summer of Code pro project as well as um, something that we've been looking into try and get support for. But hopefully you should be able to open up uh, Affinity Designer files. Uh, the support will be patchy to start with, uh, but support will increase over time. Um, I also managed to fix a, a serious issue with the beta 2 with gradients and strokes conflicting against each other. So if you had a, a, a gradient fill, you would no longer be able to set the stroke. Uh, you would no, no, no longer be able to edit the stroke in the film stroke di dialogue. Basically, the wires were getting crossed. Um, and I also dealt with a bunch of other packaging issues and uh, other kinds of little administrative jobs that ne needed to happen. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the things that have got into the uh, 1.5, like the one that's coming later, stuff that's not going into 1.4, but will happen eventually. Uh, first of all, I fixed a uh, Herline Strokes bug. I may want to backport that for 1.4.1, to be honest, considering what it is. But basically, if you set a, a, an object to have a Herline Stroke, it should always have a single pixel stroke. Uh, but in these situations, it didn't. Uh, it, when you resized it, it, the stroke as set in the XML would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, the detection for clicking on things, so selecting objects, would then break because you would no longer be able to select the things behind it. Uh, and this is a very strange uh, situation for your file to end up with. And it's not obvious how to fix it or the fact that it's the hairline stroke that's causing it. Um, but that's fixed now. Uh, the couple of actual problems there have been fixed. Um, a feature that I added, uh, just because I like to make features now and then, just to you know, it's it's nice to be able to make things. I added a a a, um, a box to the node tool, which is the distance between two selected nodes. It only appears when you have two selected nodes. Two, not three. Four is way too much, and one is not enough. Two nodes. And what it does is it allows you to set the distance between them, right? So if, if nodes are currently, let's say, 10 centimeters apart and you want to set it to 15, you can select the line uh, and it will select those two nodes and then set it, set this box to 15 centimeters. And now the line will squat, will basically resize those two nodes away from each other until they're 15 centimeters. If you select one node and then the other node with the mouse uh, the, and resize it to 15 instead of resizing from the middle it'll resize from the first selected node um, this should make it more predictable in terms of like what's going to change in the object when you resize it um, for now it's just going to i'm just going to see how that design works out with, with users um, it sounds like it's going to be useful i know it would be useful for some of the work that i've been doing um, but yeah let, let me know what you think um, i made a start on supporting more color modes in python uh, what this is basically taking all of the color support work that we've put into Inkscape itself, making sure that it's available in Python extensions. This is because the new PDF exporter will be a Python extension, so obviously it'll need to be able to open up all of these new colors that we're creating in Inkscape. Uh, this is the device CMYK, the ICC profiles themselves, uh, but also other stuff, HSV, HSL, HSLove, anything that we can set in that XML the Python should be able to open. Um, that work is not complete yet. And I've also been working on the designs for the um, 
the actual color work from the uh, UX games that the, the previous video that, that I did. Thank you for all the people that were involved in that. Um, a lot of this work is just about compressing and filtering all of the information. So um, that's about it for now, but I will just, I just want to give a shout out to two, two groups of people. First of all is the rest of the Inkscape community who are really trying their best uh, with you know difficult circumstances to uh, get a release of Inkscape out the door. Um, this year has been particularly difficult um, and we're going to sort of, once we get 1.4 out, we're going to have a review and see what's going on and if there's a ways we can improve it. Uh, almost everybody that works on Inkscape, except for me and, and a couple of others, are, aren't paid. They're all volunteers. And it's amazing the work that volunteers can get done. Um, but hopefully you guys understand that sometimes these tasks take a lot longer because there isn't the same amount of re resources available as there is for a big co corporation. Um, and the other, I want to give a big shout, shout out to all the Google Summer of Code students. They're doing an awesome job this, this year. And I can't wait to see your work finished. And, uh, and that's it from me. Um, I'm currently having a bit of a break as well. Um, it's summertime here, and uh, I'm currently at a, a weekend wedding retreat um, just to relax a little bit. But I will catch up with you guys soon. Um, maybe two, maybe three weeks. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. Okay. See you, everybody. <laughs>